أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهتنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم نعجري المقلوب عليهم الله الله الكبير <تصفيق> Again, we are grateful to God for giving us this opportunity that we have today, and this is a huge honor that God has bestowed upon us, and uh, we are indebted uh, eternally to Him uh, that we are here and we are alive, and we have this opportunity and this chance that uh, we can we can make contact with our Creator and, and grow our souls and get closer to Him, and that should be our um, goal and our aspiration and, and hope that, that we get closer to our Creator and uh, and uh, make sure that we uh, are grateful to Him uh, for this uh, occasion and this is this is not something that happens uh, by uh, chance or uh, by luck this is something that God has designed for us and so we should be uh, um, we should be uh, thankful and appreciative of his uh, huge blessing that he's given us today. Um, <clears throat> again, we are following the path of God when we are grateful to him because he is grateful for everything that we do. Uh, he appreciates everything good deed that we do and and uh, so we are uh, we are following his path and uh, again, appreciativeness and, and, and gratefulness and thankfulness is a godlike quality and so we follow him, we follow his path and so that's the only way that we can uh, make sure that we are um, worthy of, of his blessing and his uh, favors that he has bestowed upon us, bestow, he's bestowing upon us every day of our lives. Uh, <clears throat> so what I wanted to basically chat with you today is that, uh, that uh, uh, only, we, only if we worship God alone. Only if we did that. Okay, it's a very simple message. It's to the point, and it's very targeted at, at the core essence of our being. That we have to worship God alone. And when we do that, everything else falls into place. And if we do not do that, we are warned by God. That if we do not do that, if we do not worship him alone, then what happens to us is that we are going to get lost. The entire structure of our being is going to collapse. And, and we are not going to find peace, contentment, fulfillment for ourselves and our souls. And so we go into the state of wondering what we are doing here, okay. why we've been created, question after question after question after question, and then before you know it, we are going to become a disbeliever, a kafir, which means that somebody who hides things okay, knows that there is something right with that kind of system that God has, but wants to cover it and ignore it. Okay? Deny it. And so, so that's what we're going to end up as. And if we do that, then we are hiding and we are trying to ignore the truth about the entire situation that we're in, the entire universe, the universal truth that God has created. Okay? Now, now remember now that nothing can be done without the truth. God says so. He says, if it is according to the truth, then God says to it, be and it is. Okay? The truth creates things. Okay? A few weeks ago we talked about this. We said that, you know, that the Cosmology of the Quran also says that he also expands uh, matter. 
okay? Not just the space that expands according to the cosmology that everybody believes in. Okay, today's cosmology, people say that, yeah, that there is uh, the space around us, you know, expands and, and everything just, you know, um, gets bigger. Okay? But also he creates more mass. He creates more matter. He creates more space. He creates more land. And so, with this generosity and everything that God has, okay, we owe to Him that we worship Him because it's the truth. Worshiping God is the truth. And we, as believers, have to gravitate towards that truth. Okay? And so, I've said this so many times, and I'm going to repeat it again. Okay? That... One of the cornerstones of worshiping God alone is your contact prayers. Okay? Do not miss your contact prayers. When the time comes, make sure you do that first. Okay? It could be your dinner time. It could be that you're watching some program that you really like on television. It could be something you really don't want to do besides that, and it comes up. Okay. Our task is that we give priority to that because that is the cornerstone of worshiping God alone. If we don't do that, then we are again we are lost. Okay. And now being lost is just not being lost. Okay? Things are going to happen that we would not like. Things would happen that our mind and our soul is going to be suffering. We are going to have things happening to us that we do not like. We think that they are, they are bad things that are happening to us. Okay. And we are going to buckle under those loads. So when the time comes, that has to be your priority. Because that is the vehicle by which you can actually make contact with your Creator. And if you miss that opportunity, okay, and give priority to other issues then you're in trouble. <clears throat> so when the time comes, okay, when it's one, one hour and 20 minutes or depending on which horizon you're in, okay, one hour and a half or something, okay, before sunrise, that's the time that you have to do your, your fetch. Okay. The Fajr is a specific time. That's what God says. He declared that specific times. So when when the dawn comes, that's your time for your contact prayers and you do it. Okay? And God has provided. So we should be we should be doing this with 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 love, eagerness. Rush towards it. Again, when the time comes at noon, when the sun goes to the highest place in the sky, starts its decline, that's the time for that time for the declining sun, sun prayers. That's a time, a specific time. So we do that. An hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes, depending again on your horizon, okay? Before sunset, that's your middle prayers. Okay. And then when 
right after sunset, as soon as the sun sets, that's your early evening prayer. And Aisha, when, when the light is gone, according again, according to about an hour and a half or so after sunset, that's the time for Aisha. And you do it. Okay. You feel better. Okay. People will respect you more. Things will work your way. Okay. That makes you happy. Okay. Your happiness depends on that. Otherwise, the thing will happen in your life that you do not like, as I said. Okay? That makes you, that bothers you. Okay? So, we go through this, as I said, we go through this, and as I said, the cornerstone of that worshiping God alone is your contact prayers. Okay. You do that, then you automatically will do the rest of the stuff that God has said for you to do. You lead a righteous life. You give your zakat, your cleansing charity, okay, willingly, you give your homes one fifty. You have some kind of sudden gain that you did not expect. Okay, you give one fifth of it. You do all of those things willingly. You don't do it grudgingly. Okay, you do your fasting willingly. And now the 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 way God has designed it, okay? This time, the days are going to get shorter, so you don't have to fast as long. That's God's design. Okay? So, when we do these things, okay, then everything will automatically fall into place. But if the foundation is not correct, if we are playing around when the time comes for prayers. If there's a really nice program that you're interested in, okay, if there is, as God says in chapter 62, okay, when they see some kind of play or business, They'll, they'll, they'll gravitate towards that. Okay? We don't want to do that. We want to grab this opportunity because it's an honor for us. These things that God has given us are honors for us. And he requires us to do these things. We should do this as an honor bestowed upon us. Not to look at it as some kind of burden. Fortunately, a lot of people do it that way. We should be honored. Okay? When God tells us to do something, it's good for us. We should be honored by that attention that God is paying to us. This love that is bestowed upon us. The kindness. The generosity. So again, as I said, only if we did that, only if we worship God alone. And he tells us what the mechanisms are. Okay. Okay. And once we do that, then we become at the level of somebody who is offering peace to God. A peace offering to God. We are at peace with our, our Creator. Break any laws that He's given you, you are in a state of war with God. Okay? When He tells you something, He means it. So many times in the Quran, 
Allah. Tilka hududullah fala taqrabuha. These are God's limits. Do not approach them. Okay. Somebody who worships God alone knows that and would not do it, would not would not approach it. Somebody who's who's then you become you reached a status of having no doubt that's what God says. And those are the faithful. Okay? The believers. Al Mu'minun. They reached the status of having no doubts. Okay. That would be a beautiful life. Otherwise, a life is going to be a burdensome life. It's going to be a life that that things that happen to you, you're going to buckle under them. Okay. You look at the whole universe differently. Okay. Things that happen in that universe is going to be burdensome for you. It's going to be disturbing to you. Believers go through the same thing. But they come out strong. They pass those tests with flying colors. They never buckle under them. Because they know who God is. Okay. And so we should strive in that cause. As I said, only if we worship God alone. And I told you what the mechanisms are. And so I'm going to stop here and... and uh...